please stop. I sincerely think you need mental help, counseling and or medicine. Oh, God almighty. I'm acting hysterical. Yeah. How am I acting hysterical? Sneezing. God, why do you hate me so much? You didn't get boneless swings? Get in the car, Grace. How much for me to drink my own urine? How much for my dad to drink his own piss? This is the worst cigarette I've ever had. Ow! Our goal today, I think, is to convince Darius that he's not a victim of knowing us. Darius, we're gonna have a great time together. Hey, Grace. Yeah? Take a shower, bro, it looks- Darius, crazy. that sounds great, buddy. Darius, I want us to like make peace, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think- Love, not war. Go to Corral, go to Corral, probably do that. Darius, I've been up since four o'clock. If you take a shower, she can wash those. those. No. You're good. Darius, you can off? you turn that off? I would hit the power button. Darius, you need a nap. Darius, you're making a list of the things that we're going to take care of for you. It's oh, like Darius, sticks, you're in for a uh, treat. Darius, what kind of pizza do you like? Darius, we have eaten since five. Darius hasn't eaten all day. Yet. Darius, do you need a haircut? Do you like Tyler Perry movies? This is great being here with you, Darius. Getting pizza, custard later. We have plenty of time, Darius. I agree. He's autistic. Your grandma and my grandma. Oh, look at this cat's the movie. <laughs> Darius, can you focus? Darius. Darius, you want to just go sit by the screen? Are you See, that, that doesn't seem Darius, you need you need a bro. Yeah. Darius needs some space, Cena. I I just love this. I love I love the idea of having some pizza right here, just slobbing out. You know what I mean? You didn't get boneless wings. They didn't have them. I uh, I love those boneless wings. And can I get a napkin? Do you understand how like yeah. napkins go? Mm. Super. Mm. Yeah. Oh, we're on stream again. Yeah. Never ends, huh? Even even can't. <clears throat> what? I gotta, 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 I He's one of those boundary type Negroes. Oh, hello. What? We were here. There was like a gay Hispanics convention here or something last night. Hey, Darius, that sounds good, huh? What? Do you want to go get a haircut? A family one? member around. Ooh, my bitch Luna's in Discord. You ever gone out with any autistic girls? Like seriously autistic? Like legitimately autistic. Just everyone your age is autistic more or less. Hmm? I feel like me and Darius should bond. Have you ever had any uh, <laughs> substance abuse issues, Darius? No. You're interesting because you'd think you'd, uh, one would think you'd, you'd have problems with addiction, but you, you drink like an alcoholic. Uh -huh. Take your, take your, uh, take your shoes off. Yeah. Darius, have some. Uh. <sighs> oh. Elderly dementia patients have increased risk of death or stroke. Report fever. Our original plot when we were going to pick up Darius was that we would find him and that my dad would kidnap him. My dad would take Darius hostage and have him like tied up and bound or whatever gagged in the back of the RV. Can you get Darius to give us his address? So we are in Hagerstown, Maryland, Darius's hometown. 
we saw his house. Um, this is our next level. Can you open that goddamn blind? I'd have to like tie it up and everything. It's not that hard. Fuck this. Help me out, bitch. This fucking thing need to be here. Can we get this work area clear? Mm -hmm. Just, just, just pull on things really hard. I only pulled on a little bit. What the fuck? All right, well, let's just take the whole thing. Fuck. Mm -hmm. Is it the right? Dirty. You always, always do that. No matter what I'm doing, you drop something. Can we even actually physically get the lock? Grace, oh. you got to hold the nut. Oh. You've got to hold the nut. What happens between when I say something and when you, is that just called processing time? Uh, yeah. Did you, would you put this, okay, service records go in here, but where would you put the warranty for the battery? I mean, we don't need it anymore, because... Grace! No, give, give me that folder. Oh, okay. So you're definitely in victim mode. I can see it. You're not calm, you're agitated. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay, you take this off. You, you can't. You've got to be more careful. I, I'm feeling like I need to pull over to the side of the road because you're not being careful. You are attacking me for no reason. Can, can I have the oh God Almighty! You can't transfer a fucking tiny muffin to my hands. Uh, but you're a victim. Can you imagine if you had like a real hardship? How much of a victim you be? Why is it that you're a victim of everything? You're a victim of the stickiness of a muffin, which everyone knows is sticky. Play the baby, become a baby, a child, a victim. I feel like you're being a victim. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Oh, there's a Goodwill right there. I'm gonna look. Uh, I'm just gonna look around for a minute. For a minute. How much for Ben to go back and buy the safe tomorrow? Yes. Five guys. We'll just pull it out there, lean uh -huh. it on its back, and then they just kind of lift, lift it like from that to that. Uh huh. Slide it in here, and we're done. And then what? One, two, three, hit! One, two, three, live! Motherfucker! Get in the car! I got the car. You got it? Fuck me! Yes. Get in the car, Grace! Give me that, yeah. Fuck it. Just hit, winch, winch it. I'm trying! Winch it. You understand I'm trying? Winch it! Good enough? Yes, bitch, let's hit the road. Oh my god, I just realized they have a fucking loading dock here. They have a loading dock. We could have done it right through here. Too late now. Hey. You, um... Uh... What are these guys? Look at this cigarette. That's not a cigarette. It's just an empty tube. What's it doing up here? I don't know. It accident I accidentally pulled it up Accident. Here. Fucking asshole! And he Sorry. dropped it on the mic. I, I'll wipe that off. I, I thought it was. I thought it was over my shoulder. Sorry. I'll go get that. Just keep it going. National Candy Cane Day. Christmas tree display and lunch. Virtual yoga classes. Monday board gamers group. Rita texted me back. Ish. Here's another thing, if I can just finish. Sure. Ice rinks open for the season. This should just leave the stream.
All right, let's just go over to the channel and see how this is going. Testing, 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 testing. Are you actually live now? Hi, Dandy. Uh, yeah, we're live. Wouldn't you want to tell me that? I said we're live. Uh, I don't remember hearing that. Well, I definitely said that. Okay. Uh, all right, let me just, I just need to see if this is working. <laughs> test, test, test. Is it picking up? Is it low? High? Test, test, test. Don't you want to test mine too? Is it picking up? It, if, if, I mean, if one of them, the audios are merged, so they should both be working. I'm just seeing if okay, literally. Okay, so you don't this, want to test both of them. Yeah, that's fine. You know, you're being like a bitch for no reason. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to set up the audio. All right, bye. I shouldn't have said you were acting like a bitch. I just, I don't know. You're not doing this? Okay, so you don't want to stream or you want me to stream? You don't want to be on the stream? I don't know what to tell you. You decided to do what you decided to do. You've been acting completely crazy and then now that you're streaming, you maximize the craziness to alienate me. You figure out what you want to do now. It's not my problem. It's your problem. Okay. All right. And you treat me like shit, and I'm sick of it. So you wanted to do... You don't want to stream. You're a victim of that. You're a victim of the elevator not working. You're a victim of having to put a card in twice on the door. You're a victim of everything. You're sneezing like a crazy. You're saying your sinuses are acting up. 24 hours a day you're just a victim 24 hours a day you're a victim of streaming you ended your stream i said no problem you got beautiful sandwiches like the best sandwiches i've ever seen in my life and you were a victim of that you attacked me you're a victim of everything you don't want to do anything you're a victim of everything you're acting in totally and absolutely batshit hysterical i'm acting hysterical yeah how am I acting hysterical? Sneezing. You're angry about the microphones, the beautiful microphones. You're a victim of the microphones. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm, okay, all right, yes, I act a little bit like a victim of the microphones, yeah. A little bit? I don't you're really think that's. You're a victim of the RV, you're a victim of the chair. <sighs> I'm sitting there trying to make it nice and comfortable. For yeah. You. Why don't you let me finish this? I'm sorry, that was. You... Oh, and now we do that. The, it was too quick. I knew it was too quick. Why is it that anyone would want to be around someone who treats them like this every day? What are you angry about? Couldn't it be because this hotel room is dry? You're a victim of everything, the atmosphere, the air, the water, everything. You're just being really nice. I'm sorry that I was <laughs> such a bitch. I don't, okay, I'm going to deal with the anger problem because you're being really nice. I don't want to be <sighs> just a cunt all the time. <laughs> Where are those little lav mics? What, what's in that, uh, what's in that coffee cup? Bring me that bo box of bottles over here. Put it right in here. This, it's a very cool bottle, you'd have to say, right? It's supposed to look like a milk jug. Yes, it's a cool bottle. Why don't you show them it? If you can possibly not be a victim of that. Hold on, Spicoli's Why don't going. you do one thing at a time? Great, it's me, Spicoli. Hi, Spicoli. <laughs> hey, what Spicoli, what's up? Hey, do you miss um, Maggie or your other siblings? That is sweet of well, you. Well, I can't me. legally talk with them or communicate with them. Abs absolutely. Uh, why don't I take that? Live. Okay, I, I don't feel like you're safe. The phone? Yes. I didn't send anything. I didn't even type anything. Can I have that back, please? Thank you. It's mine. Yes. Thank you. Can you get my shoes and put them under the heater? Yes. Mm -hmm. Boop, boop, boop. Yep. 
This one is working. The slap mic is working. Victim. AF says, how much did you pay for the safe? $150. Which is a steal. Plus, I don't, really, really... I don't really need the safe right now, to be honest. <laughs> Do you think you were manic when you bought it? What? Like manic. Like you weren't thinking clearly. He seemed like a completely normal individual. But at some point during the winter, he must have suffered some kind of a complete mental breakdown. He ran amok and uh, <laughs> killed his family with an axe. Did you just call me a pig? <laughs> God, why do you hate me so much? I hate you! Fuck you! I'm sorry for saying that. I'm not sorry for saying that. I hate you! I'm sorry I'm so ungrateful. <laughs> Mommy! fucking grandpa did i was at a panera bread with him and my grandma and my dad and my uncle and my mom and i was la like it was a really tense conversation and i was just like sort of laughing you know how i laugh when i get in trouble it was the same kind of thing i was just kind of like giggling at everybody but i didn't i wasn't trying to do it rudely and he was like he came up to, he, he i was across the table from him and he goes like what is so fucking what he didn't say fucking what is so funny like he was gonna hit me Fuck you! Fat ass old man. Why don't you go suck your ex wife's dick a little bit more? Drive her around. Two of you are pathetic. <clears throat> Anyways, that's where the rage should be directed at. These fucking assholes. God. And then he made me apologize. Then he made me apologize because I never apologized for telling him to go fuck himself. I don't apologize. I take back my apology. I rescind my apology. Go fuck yourself, Grandpa. Go fuck yourself. I don't believe in what you believe in, you fucking asshole. So yeah, I do stand by my diatribes against my family. And your and grandpa's one of the best ones. But at the end of the day, you said I dress like a hooker. So fuck you. Dress like a hooker. You're gay. You are gay. You watch Superman and you dream of being Lois Lane. You are gay, nigga. You're gay! And fuck you, mom! And fuck you, not fuck you, John, because you're not super in the cult, but like, fuck you for this fucking cult thinking. It's so crazy! I have to apologize for telling you to go fuck yourself, but just because you don't say go, just because you don't swear, Grandpa, doesn't mean you don't say in a million fucking ways, go fuck yourself. When my siblings are in your backyard and you tell my dad, can you gather your offspring and leave my premises? Just because you don't use swears, you p doesn't mean you're not telling us to go fuck ourselves. So just say it with your chest now. Say it with your chest, n you fucking bully! Just say it! You seem like a very rude girl. You seem like a nasty fucking passive aggressive bitch. This isn't even crazy. I'm just tapping in to years of these fucking people. And fucking fat ass Pat calls in. Oh, you're a big tough guy. Hey, fat so, why don't you text me? You know what? I'll give you a call right fucking now. What's your fucking problem, nigga? What's your fucking problem? You big fat stupid. You're a dog catcher? You're a dog catcher. Your fat little ass with your little hands runs around trying to catch chihuahuas in Boston? That's what you do for a job? Explain the Superman thing? My, my grandpa was once watching the Superman movie with um, my mom and dad and there's a scene in the Superman movie where Superman 
picks up Lois Lane, I think, and like flies with her. <coughs> and um, so like he's holding Lois Lane. And my grandpa turned to my mom and dad and he said, can you imagine what Lois is feeling right now? <laughs> I mean, what the fuck is wrong with you people? Aunt Sarah invited me to go to a concert when I was like 12 and I was like, oh, okay, I'm into K-pop, right? Whatever, I was into K-pop. And I showed her some concerts we could go to and then she just like didn't respond. She was like, let's go to a concert together. Like, fuck you whore, you fucking stupid fat whore. Go smoke some more weed, you fucking loser. I hope you die from your breast cancer. What's wrong with you? Why didn't any of you ever show me any sympathy? What's wrong with you fucking losers? You never reached out. My mom fucking turns against my dad and you take her side and you're going to help her clean up her house and you don't even reach out to us? The fuck is wrong with you? I would have gone to see anything with her. God, you think you're fucking Jesus Christ because you offer to take a kid to a concert and then you don't. You think you're Jesus Christ because you, you answered my whole mother's phone call at midnight to come save Maggie from her sister in an airport and then you tell me to apologize to Maggie for doing this to her why don't you ever say hey Courtney this seems a little crazy why don't you ever say that why don't you ever say that hey Courtney why are you calling the cops on your 20 year old daughter Who's with your with your daughter with your other daughter who you totally trust and when your daughter Grace asks you on the phone why are you doing this to me you say to teach you a lesson You're calling the police to teach her a lesson about what So you're not afraid of me you think I'd be perfectly fine with Maggie You're calling to teach me a lesson What's the lesson fucking you whore? What's the lesson that I can't see my own siblings? You're gonna pay for teaching me that lesson, you whore! Why can't I see my siblings? You fucking bitch! Why? Why? I'm perfectly capable of taking care of a child. You know that I took care of your children when I was eight fucking years old! You think you're gonna, I know you're watching this, you think you're gonna block me on text and then threaten to call the cops if I wanna take my sister to the bowling alley? You are gonna pay for that. Okay, so I got a little bit distracted there. So I sent it to Pat and my sister, my dad, my three brothers, my mother, my other sister, your mother, my other sister's non-husband, and I sent it to your siblings and to my brother Al's two kids, your cousins, to my brother Tim's wife and to my brother Al's wife, Elizabeth. Okay. So it was 19 people were sent this. As I think you've all become aware, my relationship with my father has deteriorated significantly. I was wondering if any of his brothers, my uncles, might be able to offer any insights. I'm not looking for any of you to judge him or me or anyone else. Just thought you might have some thoughts instead of just shutting down the conversation. For example, my father has always seemed to have an issue with masculinity. My guess is that it had something to do with trying to make sense of his parents' relationship. Am I off? Uncle Oli, perhaps this discussion is too vague for you to offer anything substantive. Though again, I appreciate your response. So let me make it more specific. When my older brother Alex and I were young teenagers, I believe my father gave you a ride to the airport to get on a flight to London, and we tagged along. On the ride there, you and my father surprised us by announcing that we were going with you to London. I personally was very excited to take a trip to London as my family's life was very difficult and sad after my parents' contentious divorce. Can I get some water? 
Yes. At the airport, you and my father had a good laugh at the expense of my brother and I when it became clear that, in fact, we would not be accompanying you on your trip. My question is, what's funny about doing that? What kind of grown men would do that to two boys, and why? My uncle responded, I do not recall any such trip to the airport with your father or any conversation along the lines of your note below. Thanks again for your response. It really means a lot to me. And please feel free to forward my email to anyone you'd like. Of course, I may have gotten the facts wrong, but I remember the incident distinctly. And it is 100% consistent with my limited experience of your nature. You always struck me as an extremely angry, mean person. I actually like that about you in a way. I feel the same drive in myself. The drive to cut through the nonsense and get to the bottom of things. I just don't understand why it had been directed against me. What have I ever done to offend you? More recently, when my brother Alex was visiting me in Boston as I was pursuing my studies in Cambridge, we decided to attempt to pay you a visit. We first tried to contact you by phone, but were unable to get your number. We were able to get your address on Marlboro Street, so we decided to just pop by and say hello, on the chance that you might be home. You were and you graciously invited us in for a short visit. You were renovating some kitchen cabinets, and I remember hearing Aunt Kelford, my aunt, who died of cancer, coughing in the back room, as I think she was very sick. After a short visit, you forcefully pushed us out of the front door and slammed the door in our faces. It was the rudest treatment I have ever experienced in my life, before or since. I surmise that you were, at the time, troubled by the situation with Aunt Kelford, and that's why you acted so irrationally. But why be so rude and cruel? Why not simply say it wasn't a good time for a visit? My dear brother's big fail on the conversation really sucked. We need to do better. I tried to stimulate a similar conversation with our cousins. Here's the reply I got from Victoria, who doesn't really know me at all. And, and then I put her email back to me, to my parents. As you both know, I've been trying for some time now to stimulate a conversation about our family dynamics, including the larger Thorpe family. The response has been brutal. I've been told that I'm crazy, rude, disrespectful, making up things that never happened, etc. My truth says, who emails their family members like this? I do. Just a couple of days ago, I managed to get back in touch with my brother, Al, and I told him this crazy story mom had told me about how, in her mind, on my last visit to her, I had secretly planted three dead mice in her basement <laughs> using my kids. He told me, yeah, I've heard that story a million times from Mom. I asked him, laughing, whether he thought it was totally batshit crazy, and he said he didn't feel comfortable commenting on it. I think my marriage was an attempt to work out childhood issues, as I think most marriages are. For better or worse, I chose a mate with profound hostility issues and attempted to beat them out of her, literally and figuratively. At this point, I have only partially succeeded. I'm not interested in exploring the comforts and consolations of being a loser and acting like a victim. Being a loser sucks. I want to go for the big win for me, my wife, my kids, and anyone else who might be interested. Let me know if you're interested. His response, one word, received. Are there more emails? It made me think that perhaps mom has been telling you crazy stories like this about me for years, and maybe that, along with just the general busyness of life, this narrative has made you see me as some kind of psychotic monster. We got, I got no response on that one. I sent him this emoji back. My brother Al said, not, I said, don't you think it's great? He said, not at all. Please stop. I sincerely think you need mental help, counseling and or medicine. You seem inclined to blame others, your grandparents, parents, brothers, wife, etc. And I don't hear you taking any responsibility for your own part. Hey, Tim, I think about your response and I would like to sincerely, but uh, his response, I want you to stop emailing me with these inquiries. <laughs> <laughs> so somewhere in this whole thing, I was sharing this stuff with you and right. you were like, I don't know, maybe I'll give it a shot. I understand that my dad's been reaching out to our extended family through email for the past couple of days. And from what I've heard, the response has been to shut him down. As I'm writing this, I feel like it hasn't just been little comments from grandma. For example, about a year ago, I met her at the bank for my 18th birthday present, and she took me aside in the parking lot afterwards with my little sister Maggie, who had come with me, and said something like, I just want you to know that I understand that Ben has a lot of problems, especially with OCD, and I hope he can deal with them. I was a little OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, when I was about seven or eight years old. I used to wash my hands after going to the bathroom so much that they chapped and started bleeding and scabbing because I had this totally irrational fear that if my hands weren't clean, I could wipe germs on myself or someone else and make them sick and dirty. <clears throat> I even used to wash my hair in the sink with hand soap because I was worried that it had germs. 
That's OCD, and since I've known my dad for 19 years, I think it's safe to say that I know the guy does not have an OCD. So how am I supposed to process her making this ludicrous diagnosis of him that has no basis in reality? Especially when I know that I personally experienced the mental disorder that she is diagnosing him with, and that he doesn't have it. If anything, Grandma was giving me a mental disorder by authoritatively telling me that my dad had OCD, when I knew he didn't have OCD. And therefore, I either had to say that she was living in a fantasy world, or that I was living in a fantasy world. Your father has verbally attacked members of this family via email for years. <laughs> Victims of emails. <laughs> oh my God. I believe that Ben has experienced a lot of pain as have both of you. And I want him to find relief from that as much as I want that for each of you and for the rest of that. Yeah, you want me dead. Not gonna happen. I will feel relief when the truth is told. Do you put the receiver on this window? Okay. Okay. Sure. Then I can go down there and do it at my own Thus, a more accurate name for feminism would actually be masculinism. Just take a look at any super female superhero figure in recent movies, and what you'll see is a physical female who has all the psychological attributes of a male. Fighting, strength, combativeness, etc. And even her physical attributes are hypersexualized and turned into sexual weapons. No dresses on these ladies, only spandex and leather. Gone entirely are traditional female traits, humility, obedience, gentleness, empathy, lightheartedness, care for the weak, etc. And I, for one, think our culture is in dire need of those traits. Our culture, in my opinion, has become hyper-masculinized and is characterized by cynicism, hyper-competitiveness, deception, individualism, harshness, technological progress, drug abuse, violence, alienation, and rage, all of which could be seen as associated with the dark side of the masculine. <laughs> Though it is of course imperfect and is widely mocked today, I think that when the Catholic Church was the dominant force in Western society, women were genuinely held in great esteem. Not because they were like men, as feminism argues, but precisely because they were not like men and had vitally necessary contributions to make qua women, in other words, as women. Most obviously, the mother of Jesus was held in such high regard as the greatest of all saints that Protestantism falsely claimed that she was worshipped, was held in such high regard that Protestantism claimed that she was worshipped by Catholics as divine. And a careful scholarly reading of medieval history evinces a rich variety of roles which women could play in society, including as leaders, writers, artists, and great mystics. Furthermore, in our own day in the age of feminism, I would challenge anyone honestly to claim that any feminist has brought as much respect and dignity to the role of women as Mother Teresa, now Saint Teresa of Calcutta, who was recently declared a saint. Yeah. What feminists are feminists proud of? They're pigs. All of them are pigs. I would hope that we could all recognize that whatever its problems may be, I'm trying here to make a sincere intellectual argument and break through some of the slogan hurling that we all rightly find nauseating. Though I look forward with great relish to the continued analyses of my moral depravity and crumbling sanity, I would also love to hear a serious response to what I've said. To make it a bit personal, the problem in my own immediate nuclear family has been that, while we are all in agreement that feminism is a misguided philosophy, which ends up in a hatred of humanity and life itself, just because a woman renounces feminism does not necessarily mean that she is, in doing so, able to eliminate deep psychological tendencies of hostility towards men and masculinity. I know that in other families the converse can be true, and adherence to feminism intellectually would not necessarily entail those deep psychological tendencies, and this may well be the case among you, the members of my extended family, although I really don't have enough experience to discern that. So what I'm saying is sometimes feminists are really actually in practice pro-masculine and sometimes anti-feminists are actually in practice anti-masculine. I would love for us to explore the dynamics of how that works together because I have found these dynamics to be incredibly puzzling and confusing in my own experience and could frankly use some help without all of the hostility and defensiveness. Love, Ben. <laughs> Now Pat responds to me. Now we get into it with Pat. You ready, buddy? Ben, ignoring what may or may not be sarcasm with the salutation, my dear brother-in-law. 
Thank you for your response. You've clearly taken a lot of time to think about it and type it out. Obvious sarcasm. Loser. I understand that you have a definition, or several definitions, for the word feminism than I do. I think that is the problem with labels, especially politically loaded ones. They never encompass the true meaning of what we're trying to say. Okay. What does that mean? Words are labels. So you have a problem with words. Okay, that's why you drink and smoke weed. Anyway, did I miss a question for me in there, or was this just you letting me know your thoughts? I don't mean this as sar sarcasm. It's an honest question. Okay. By including the et al, did you have a question or comment for someone else? Okay. Obviously, I'm saying, like, would, would you care to respond? I'm sorry to say this. No, you're not. But so much has been written in these emails that I'm not sure what, what you want an honest response to. Liar. Maybe it would help communication if you began with specific, succinct questions or comments directed to the person or people you're interested in hearing from. Okay, let me do that now. Why don't you stop being such a baby and respond to the volumes that has been written here instead of just saying, shut the fuck up, I don't like words, and other retarded things. Pat, you're not retarded. You're fat. You're ugly, you're a loser, you have no education. That doesn't mean you can't respond to words. <laughs> and human nature being what it is, it might be easier for some people to respond honestly and openly if they're not in front of an audience. No, 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 no. They need to be in front of an audience. Otherwise, they just manipulate and lie, Pat. Sincerely, actually insincerely, Pat. All right, then I don't know where it goes from here, but it's certainly not over. Grace.